yourself for invasion. This is Indie Invasion. History of Venice. La Serenissima stands upon the brink of greatness once again. Reclaiming a triumphant position it had known well in centuries past, but allowed to slip away. Until the rent in the sky set the faces of all nations awry, Venice had been waning. The rise of an empire. Economically, the city was a pale imitation of its former power. At the height of its prowess, from the 15th to the 16th century, only one city was greater than Venice in size. And Paris could not claim the great maritime empire of its southern rival. Inland, the power of the city extended far. The Domini di Terraferma laid Venice's influence and then dominance upon cities such as Padua and Verona, extended as far as the lands of Lombardy. Only Florence and the Papal States to the south and the boundary of Milano to the west prevented expansion. But it mattered not. Trade bolstered trade, and the seas were the means by which the city rose above its rivals. This power had an older heart, a kernel of political strength and financial muscle that dated back to the sack of Constantinople in 1204. From this conquest, the Venetians built the superior arsenal and ports upon the Black Sea, supping upon the rich trade from even further east. At their height, the shipyards on the Adriatic launched unparalleled numbers of vessels, outstripping the combined fleets of England and France by a wide margin. Trade flowed back in through the ports on these huge fleets, fueling the Stato de Mar until it reached Crete and Cyprus and laid claim to the Aegean Islands. The bounties of the Mediterranean were opened for the Venetians to exploit to their utmost. The reach of the Venetian elite stretched deep into the Balkans, drawing back raw materials and wealth for its voracious markets and merchants. Such had been the past, when kings and popes had courted the favors of Venice, and governments of states the world over had desired the trade of its harbors. But history is nothing if not unrelenting and bolder, brighter powers rose in the north. England and the Netherlands, miserable places of mud and churlish merchants, turned their eyes across the Atlantic and to the distant shores of Africa and Asia. The fall into chaos. As the 16th century turned into the 7th, the fortunes of these new sea powers were on the rise and that of Venice was rapidly curtailed. Unable to compete in the West, Venice was ill-prepared for the emergence of the Ottoman Empire in the East. One by one, its enclaves in the Mediterranean and its possessions in Cyprus were pried from its grip by losses to this new dominion. Bright had burned the star of Venice for generations but slow and inevitable was the slide toward her twilight. As trade diminished and influence slipped away, La Serenissima became a starved, ruined shadow of its former glory. 
For the privileged few, luxury continued. But for most, every day was a struggle for survival. While merchants and even the lesser nobility became desperate for any trade or investment by the more prosperous classes from flourishing empires. Stripped of funds and left to the vicissitudes of time, Venice herself lost her allure and her infrastructure. The metaphorical slide of the city became literal when the island parish of San Canciano fell into the waters. Political stalemate between the old nobility and the remaining bourgeois stifled all of the doge's attempts to set Venice on a new road to prosperity. Not since the Black Death had Venice fallen further into chaos, the doge declaring that if Venice was to recover, the city needed a miracle. Thanks, guys, for listening to today's tales. You can find our Indie Invasion podcast on all podcast platforms, including Podbean, Google, and iTunes. And please visit us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. And if you can, support us on Patreon slash Indie Invasion. And feel free to email us with any questions or comments at IndieInvasion at gmail.com. And remember, guys, don't forget to prepare yourself for the invasion. <laughs>